Neo uses Winamp, the Matrix refreshes their Linux distribution, and more. This is my review for The Matrix Resurrections. A. V. N. It's headphones nailed! guys and welcome back to headphones neil reviews i'm your host as always headphones neil bringing my review for the matrix resurrections so i had a chance to watch it so if you haven't seen it there are going to be some spoilers in this episode um i will try to avoid it as best as i can as it kind of was in general to say it off the bat it was an okay sequel um, I'm not really gonna go as far as deep into the end spoiler as far as what happens in the end, but it's also nothing that's as spectacular or mind blowing as what we would expect from what we saw in the Matrix One, or even, for example, like in the Matrix Reloaded with them copying Smiths, or the Matrix um, Revolutions, where we have the ultimate battle between Neo and Smith and all the copies and all that, but. Um, it was, I will, um, bring it up as far as one point as far as that character is concerned. So, to, but actually with that, before I go on, just, I will put the spoiler alert warning in case it does come up in the form, in any form during the review. But jumping right into it, overall the film was an okay film. Um, in the beginning, watching it, they do have a lot of flashbacks, they do include a lot of scenes and film and footage from the matrix like the opening sequence from the heart of the city motel and the scene with uh, trinity escaping the cops and then uh, later with the uh, first scene between um ne uh, neo and morpheus so going into it when you're watching the first third of the movie you kind of wonder what's going on uh what um they're doing with this film and it doesn't feel like it's going to be a particularly good sequel they even have a point in the film where they bring up how warner brothers wanted to continue the franchise at which i thought it was initially cheesy but then when they bring up the whole idea that um neo created the matrix video game and they wanted to continue the franchise it actually works because we see the matrix as a system uh working to maintain the illusion that it's all in his head um, neo had a mental breakdown and the video games were kind of his for part of the form of letting it out and um he didn't need to learn to uh, um control himself so um there's all that um so in general, once we do get beyond the thir first third of the film, it actually does pick up, even though it's relatively slow. Uh, we do have, for example, Morpheus being played by a different character, but it works in the scope of this film just because we have what looks like more of a Matrix recreated um, image of what, what Morpheus looks like, which is a change up there, even though I would figure they have the um, his original template as being freed from the Matrix, but this is potentially a younger iteration of him prior to him becoming a freedom fighter for the humans. Um, and then we have Trinity and Neo being that um, being held in the Matrix in prison as prisoners and they bring up the idea that even though Neo and Trinity went after the Machine City, it was actually potentially one of many and I kind of wanted to see more about that. But when I saw that, I actually got to thinking that the Machine City runs a uh, decentralized mesh network, so even though they took down one of those nodes, they didn't take down the entire network. So it's actually an intriguing part on the machines that they didn't hold all their data in one central location, they spread it out over the entire matrix, the entire matrix, which made it that much more powerful. So. With that being said, and some of the initial hesitations of the film and where they were going out of the way, one of the cool things that I thought was when we see um, Neo 
in the Matrix acting as a game developer, his UI that he uses on the, his computer looks very much like uh, Winamp, which I'm not sure why it looks so much like that or if that was on purpose, but I actually thought that was a nice little streamlined touch. It was a good um, and interesting um, setup and interface that he was going through or using, so overall it was pretty good. Um, and from there, the general presentation of it, I like the whole thing with his boss as well that they mimic from the first Matrix, which um, and they, they're basically using Neo's own personal experiences from the Matrix and and what they have as of um, and what we saw there and whatever the last information to keep a control and reframing the information to the point where they want to keep him under control and to avoid him becoming an anomaly is to keep him in the matrix and believing that what he's seeing is real and ultimately teaming up with Morpheus and Trinity throws that control out of balance and then um, by um, keeping them separate and under control that aren't able to do that so um, ultimately have being able to free Trinity and her gaining her memories back is a good thing um, and Ultimately, the movie aims to show that this is a refresh of the Matrix and Neil Patrick Harris's character as the um, psychiatrist in Neo is actually aiming to replace, he's kind of a mix between replacing the architect and becoming the new Agent Smith that wants to control the Matrix, but also understand, because he understands people, he knows the importance of keeping the control over Neo and Trinity and that they are kind of a yin and yang where they play off each other and the only time that they're truly powerful is when they are together. So and that actually reminded me of the ring from the um, or the medallion from the Double Dragon movie that when they're separate they have their own individual powers and abilities but by coming together they're actually more powerful and they can ultimately realize their full power. So that's actually what they aim to present here, even though it was kind of janky in my opinion, and they relied a little bit too much on the Matrix. Kind of, basically, it was kind of a restore state where they're like, okay, we knew up until this point where prior to Neo and Trinity meeting up with Morpheus, um, everything was good and they had a good system of control. So they tried to reframe the system um, or the narrative so that they would maintain their control but then by um continue by not having a true purge and then um not fully removing the um uh freedom fighter element or the freedom of choice properly is ultimately still going to result in an unbalanced equation so that's why we still have the humans trying to free neo um from the matrix so all of that in general worked for me um and then of course at one point in the movie they um as far as keeping it light um they have a character named bugs and she does say um bugs as in bunny and then they end up paying that up with her saying what's up doc to um find out what's going on with neo so in general that was a nice little joke but overall those so the, all the side characters worked having niobe and um that tie-in was nice and then being able to explain why they're, the machines and humans are working together and how life is now generally just worked. The only major downside that I saw or didn't have enough of a payoff was the story of Sati. So even though we did have more backstory on her father and how he was a systems or how he was an engineer or programmer that created the pod for Neo and that tie in to the Matrix sequels. I thought there would have been more or more of a connection between her and the Oracle or why she is or isn't the Oracle or anything like that. I didn't really feel that that paid off very well. So that's really the bummer for me. So if I was to grade the film, I would probably give it about an... 85% basically a solid B. It was a good film. They tie, did their best to tie in the original trilogy to this fourth film, but it didn't feel so even though so the moment for me that they said that they're this isn't going to be like or this is gonna, they're trying to recreate the um mind bending changes in this uh film or the, or via the video game, I kind of knew from there that they weren't really going to be able to do that. Um, it did make me think a little bit as far as um, 
the yin and yang of it, but then I don't really feel like it worked very well. They relied too much on the prior films, and then they, I, they, I guess they can only have so many changes, so by not having um, Agent Smith in the film as far as the original version with Hugo Weaving, not having the original um, Morpheus in there via... Um, no, uh, what's his name? And I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne. It kind of makes for a jankiness that doesn't work. And then, of course, by having the, not having the Oracle well presented like we did in the first three films, it's one of those things that throws everything off. And it's kind of it find, kind of feels like they're trying to be too meta to the point where it doesn't really. F the, the, what they're trying to do is kind of. Um, doesn't really take it as far as it could. So even though we have, we still have um, Neo trying to save Trinity to repay the favor of her believing in him, it doesn't really feel like it paid off as well as it could have. Even though it's one of those things that also where they bring up that they did a refresh of the Matrix where they made an iteration, but they purged all the prior programs that were there. Um, and even though that didn't work as successfully as they hoped because there's still the residual memories of Agent Smith, we still have the Merovingian who's gone crazy and wasn't actually quite deleted. So it's one of those things where the refresh still didn't work and it would have required a full reinstallation and setup of the Matrix from scratch. And then not importing their prior settings and apps and things like that to make that work. So, and that's kind of just like doing a normal upgrade now, where it's like, okay, I'm gonna do a fresh installation, but uh, of let's say whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac, or Android, or iOS, or anything like that. But then not, um, and then like importing your settings, but it still imports settings that may have been corrupted or not gone as well. Um, so it's one of those things that um, it, I under, I kind of know where they were trying to go with it, but it just felt like they went too far with all the like kind of do too much of a modernization modernization and not keeping enough of the old elements. Or if since they were going with you know for example Morpheus trying to have Neo read claim his memories by using original footage I feel like they should have gone with that instead of using a new or using the new versions of everybody but only using them once um, Neo has taken the red pill he awakens in the the new ship the Neo I, for, I already forgot the name but when he awakens in the new ship and sees all these un unfamiliar faces is where he realizes that all this time has passed and they explain the story and all that but because he's already been freed and has this understanding they're able to proceed from there and then continue the story so all of that i think could have worked that much better um so like i said overall i give the film a grade of about a b i was generally enjoyable i will end up re-watching it it wasn't necessarily bad it just might require an extra watch to see if it anything changes in multiple viewings but um, if you're looking for the first Matrix, then you're not going to get that. It's basically a film to tie up loose ends and kind of pre present an idea of what happened after the peace was made between the machines and humans by Neo and how it wasn't all that it was um, queued up to be, or the peace wasn't, didn't hold up as well as they had hoped it to be to begin with, and these are kind of the residual effects after all these years. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular review and supporting the show and all of that good stuff. And until next time.